University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Both teams playing tonight won their first and second round matches and won of their quarterfinals. But they both lost a quarterfinal as well. So whichever of them wins tonight will join St John's College Cambridge and Merton College Oxford in the semi-finals. But for the losers, it'll be time to get their coats. The team from Bristol University arrived here by beating Trinity College Cambridge, Trinity College Oxford and Ulster University. But they tripped up in their first quarter-final match against the University of Newcastle. Even so, they have an accumulated score of 770 points and they have an average age of 22. Let's meet the Bristol team again. Hi, I'm Ollie Pose. I'm from Market Harbour in Leicestershire and I'm studying music. Hi, I'm Kirsty Biggs. I'm originally from Southampton and I'm doing a PhD in mathematics. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Sam Hosegood. I'm from Bedford and I study chemical physics. Hi, I'm Tom Hewitt. I'm from Stroud in Gloucestershire and I study English. The team from Edinburgh University are perhaps still smarting from their defeat by Merton College Oxford in their second quarter final, but they previously beat an Ulster University, University College London, and Emmanuel College Cambridge, giving them an accumulated score of 545. Also, with an average age of 22, let's now meet the Edinburgh team again. Hi, I'm John, I'm from Edinburgh, and I'm studying Russian and history. Hi, I'm Stanley, I'm from Edinburgh, and I'm studying for an MSc in Speech and Language Processing. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Innes, I'm from Glasgow, and I'm doing a PhD in Chemistry. Hi, I'm Philippa, I'm from Oxford, and I'm studying Biology. <laughs> OK, let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for ten. This great island lay over against the pillars of Heracles, in extent greater than Libya and Asia put together, and was the passage to other islands and to... Bristol Bowes. L Atlantis? Correct. <laughs> so you get the first set of bonuses. Bristol, they're on John Dryden's translation of Virgil's Aeneid. In each case, name the character described in the following lines. Firstly, known by her quiver and her lofty mien, she walks majestic and she looks their queen. Latona sees her shine above the rest and feeds with secret joy her silent breast. Helen? Helen? No, she wouldn't have a bow. Um, oh. Athena. Athena, oh. Athena? No, it's Dido. Uh. Secondly, a sordid god down from his hoary chin, a length of beard descends, uncombed, unclean. His eyes, like hollow furnaces on fire, a girdle, foul with grease, binds his obscene attire. Hephaestus? No, it's Charon. Finally, dark in a cave and on a rock reclined, she sings the fates and in her frantic fits the notes and names inscribed to Leaf's commits. Helen. No, that's the Sybil. Ten points for this. Meanings of what word include the edible reddish-brown seed of Castania sativa and something rendered trite or tiresome through constant repetition? For example, a story, joke or quiz question. Edinburgh Carson. Chestnut. Chestnut is correct, well yes. Done. Cheers. <laughs> Your bonuses, uh, Edinburgh, are on historical periodization. Mm -hmm. In US history, the expression era of good feelings refers to a supposed absence of partisan dispute and is often used of the administration of which early president elected 1816? Mr. Monroe. Correct. Franco Gorman's book, The Long 18th Century, covers the period of British history between the Glorious Revolution of 1688 and which year of the 19th century during which the Great Reform Act was passed? Is it the Great Reform Act? 1813? <laughs> I'm not sure about the Great Reform Act. It's about 1813 or something. Good call of that yeah. thing. 1830. 1832 was the Great yeah. Reform Act. 
Belgium. What three-word French phrase is often used to describe the arts and culture of the 1880s and 90s? It also appears in the title of Karl E. Schorska's account of the politics and culture of Vienna at that time. Uh, La Belle Epoque. No, it's not. It's fin de siècle. OK, fair enough. Right, ten points for this. From a Sanskrit word meaning noble or distinguished, what five-letter term now chiefly appears in the name of a branch of the Indo-European language family? From the mid-19th to the mid-20th century, it was commonly used as a racial designation. And a Brahitan Armstrong. Arian. Arian is correct, okay. yes. Your bonuses are on small and large physical units. In each question, the larger unit is exactly or approximately some power of 10 greater than the smaller unit. I simply want you to give me the power of 10. So, if the question were how many millimetres in a metre, the answer would be 10 to the 3 or 1,000. Mm -hmm. First, then, units of pressure. How many millipascals are there in one bar? I'm out. So I'd guess maybe there's about a thousand. So, so we're trying to be six. six. Uh, ten to the six. No, it's ten to the eight. A hundred million. Okay. Then distance. How many angstroms are there in a light year? <laughs> well, uh, angstroms minus ten. I, I can't even estimate a light year. That's massive. Do you the, no, I mean, no. Um, so, um, Try, yeah. uh, 21. No, it's 10 to the 26. Oh. And finally, mass. How many milligrams are there in a metric ton? Right, OK, so it's a milligram. Thousand, it's a thousand, thousand, thousand. Um, yeah, because milligrams to grams, grams to kilograms to yeah. tons. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. at nine. nine. Yeah. Uh, 10 to the nine. 10 to the nine is correct. <laughs> One billion, yes. <laughs> OK, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a photograph of participants at an academic conference. For ten points, give me the decade in which the conference took place and the branch of science with which it was primarily concerned. Uh, Edinburgh Carson. Uh, the 1920s, and it was quantum physics. That's correct. It's the yeah. Solvay Conference. <laughs> yes. Right, so the fifth Solvay Conference in 1927 was an unusual concentration of brain power. More than half of the 29 participants were current or future Nobel laureates. For your picture bonuses, I want you to identify three of those participants from one of their significant equations. Firstly, <laughs> which physicist gives his name to this equation? Uh, is that the Schrodinger <laughs> equation? Schrodinger? I, think I think it is, yeah. H, 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 yeah, each side, yeah. Uh, Schrodinger. Schrodinger is correct. Secondly, after whom is this equation named? I don't recognise that. Do you want to try? Um, Do you want to try Dirac? Dirac, maybe. Do we have any idea? Uh, Dirac. Dirac is right. Finally, which physicist is primarily associated with this equation? Oh, Einstein. Einstein. Oh, is that the Einstein field? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Einstein. Einstein is right. <laughs> right, ten points at stake for this starter question. Named after a Princeton mathematician and based on coupling models of Markov chains, what is the name of the card trick in which a magician apparently ah. guesses... Edinburgh Wang. Oh... Sorry, no. I'm, yes, I'm sorry. You're going to lose five points. A magician apparently guesses a card selected by a volunteer according to a specific counting procedure. Bristol Biggs. Nash trick. No, it's Kruskal. Right, another starter question. Which figure of Greek mythology gives her name to a psychological complex first identified by Carl Jung in 1913? Ah. Edinburgh Carson. Electra. Electra is correct, yeah. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on UNESCO World Heritage Sites in China. In each <clears> case, <throat> listen to the extract from the citation and name the province in which the site is located. Firstly, the watchtowers of Kaiping. They reflect the significant role of emigre people in the development of several countries in South Asia, Australasia and North America during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. I'm no help. No. Uh, is this just going to be a guess? I mean, I, 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 I don't really know where it wasn't a lot of the emigration from the Canton, so it might be Guangzhou. Is that the problem? Guangzhou, yeah. Yeah, is that it? Go with that, maybe. I'm not making Can sure. I nominate you for these pronunciations? Guangzhou, yeah. Uh, uh, nominate Wang. Uh, Guangzhou? 
No, it's Guangdong. Secondly, the Three Parallel Rivers site. It features sections of the upper reaches of three of the great rivers of Asia, the Yangtze, the Mekong and Salween. The site is an epicentre of Chinese biodiversity. The Yunnan, Yunnan. I was thinking that because it must really be somewhere. Like, cool, so. Okay, let's, let's yeah. try that then. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Yunnan. Correct. What else? And finally, the Mogao Caves, southeast of the Dunhuang Oasis. They comprise the largest, most richly endowed, and longest used treasure house of Buddhist art in the world. I think, I think if it's in an oasis, it might be um, in. in um, what's the furthest west one? Like East Turkestan? Would you call it Xinjiang or something like that? Xinjiang. Yeah. yeah. If that's yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, it's mainly Gansu, but yeah, okay. Try Xinjiang. You can. Uh, uh, Xinjiang. No, it's Gansu. Okay. Oh, sorry. Ten points for this. Described by the broadcaster John Arlott as probably the most variously gifted Englishman of any age, which Test cricketer appeared in an FA Cup final for Southampton and once shared the world record for the long jump? He ran for Parliament as a Liberal candidate and was reportedly offered the throne of Albania while working at the League of Nations. Bristol Hewitt. Dennis Compton. <laughs> nope. Anyone want to buzz from Edinburgh? It's C.B. Fry. Ten points for this. Before the introduction of DDT, which invertebrate was primarily responsible for the transmission of the epidemic typhus bacterium, notably among fighting forces living in close proximity? Its binomial is Pediculus humanus. Bristol Biggs. Mosquito. No, anyone like to buzz from Edinburgh? Edinburgh Carson. Fleas. It's the body louse. Ten no. points for this. Based on a prophet described as one of the sheep farmers of Tekoa, which short book of the Old Testament has a name that, when read backwards, forms the name of a euphoriant drug in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World? Edinburgh Wang. Amos. Amos is correct. This one. Yes. <laughs> You get three questions on British winners of the Kate Greenaway Medal for Distinguished Illustration in a Book for Children. Which author and illustrator firstly won in 2000 for I Will Not Ever Never Eat a Tomato, the story of Lola, a girl who refuses to eat all manner of food and tomatoes in particular? I'm not bad. Is this I... illustrators? I can't... I can I no scarcely idea. name any, sorry. Um, nope. I don't know, sorry. Well, just pass. Pass. That's Lauren Child. In 1999, which author and artist won for her contemporary illustration of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? She also collaborated with Michael Rosen on We're Going on a Bear Hunt. Oh, I have no idea. Who was in the bear hunt? No, I can't remember I've who that was. I have no idea who's on. It's not Donaldson. What was her name? Oh, no. <laughs> Julia Donaldson. Uh, that's Helen Oxenbury. Okay, and okay. finally, which author and illustrator won in 1966? For his pictures accompanying the Mother Goose Treasury and again in 1973 for his cartoon strip story, Father Christmas. No, I'm sorry. No, yeah. um, Quentin Blake. Yeah, that was that. Was <laughs> Quentin Blake. No, that was Raymond Briggs. Ten okay. points for this. In a scale model, the Earth is the size of a basketball while the Moon is the size of a tennis ball. To the nearest whole metre, how far away from the basketball should the tennis ball be? Bristol Hosegood. 20 metres. Nope. Edinburgh Carson. Nine metres. No, it's seven, 7.19 precisely. Right, ten points for this. Born in St Petersburg in 1902, George Ostrogorsky is noted for a comprehensive history of what polity? Its rulers included Zoe, Irene, Theodora, six Leos and 11 Constantines. Bristol Bows. Byzantine Empire. Correct. You get three questions on heat sterilisation techniques in microbiology. Firstly, the most dependable method of destroying all forms of microbes, which sterilisation technique involves the use of steam heated to 121 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes? Pasteurisation? It's autoclaving. 
Secondly, named after its inventor, which process involving exposure to free-flowing steam for 30 to 60 minutes on three consecutive days is designed to reduce the level of activity of sporulating bacteria? Pasteurisation? <laughs> no, that's tindalisation. And finally, what term is commonly used for the practice of sterilising inoculating loops or glassware by direct exposure to fire? Ultra heat treatment? No, it's flaming. Oh. We're going to take a music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear an aria from an opera. For ten points, please name the opera. Edinburgh Stone. Madame Butterfly. It is Madame Butterfly, yes. <laughs> that was one of the operas critiqued in Catherine Clement's book Opera or the Undoing of Women, which explores how traditional opera plots frequently feature, quote, the infinitely repetitive spectacle of a woman who dies. Your music <laughs> bonuses are three such operas. Mm. Firstly, the title of this opera, please. It could be, I don't know. Shall we just try that? Yeah. Oh, no, I have no idea. Uh, Should we just guess that? Yeah. Tosca. No, that's that traviata, the oh, letter succumbs to tuberculosis okay. at the end. Secondly... In some strange way, it's vaguely familiar. I just, um... <laughs> Can I just try so something? Absolutely. Uh, Tristan and Isold. That is absolutely right. Well done. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. Tristan says, do you want to follow me into death? And she says, oh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. And finally... That's, that's Carmen. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Carmen. Indeed, she gets yeah. stabbed to <laughs> death. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. Which city was the target of the expedition known as the Singeing of the King of Spain's Beard, an attack of 1587 led by... Bristle Bones. Cadiz. Cadiz is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on Hindu deities and the animals they use for transport. In each case, identify the animal from the description. Firstly, associated with Shiva and Parvati's elder son, Kartiki, a large flying bird native to India and known for its distinctive plumage, its binomial is Pavo Cristatus. Was flying bird. Mm. Maybe. Did it happen? Peacock? Correct. Secondly, Yama, the god of death, travels on a male of what animal with the binomial Bubalis Bubalis? It's a domesticated bovid common in South Asia. Yak? That's a buffalo. And finally, Ganesh's carrier is often depicted as which member of the Muridai family representing nervousness experienced at the start of a new venture? A mouse. Muridai's, Muridai's a mouse. A mouse? Correct. <laughs> Another starter question. What is the common name of the flowering plant Althea officinalis? Its root was the original source of a confection that still bears its name. And a stone. Marshmallow. Marshmallow is well right. Well <laughs> Three questions on English history, Edinburgh. In the early part of his reign, which King of England published the anti-Lutheran treatise Assertio Septem Sacramentorum, or Defence of the Seven Sacraments? Henry VIII. Does that sound good to Henry you? VIII. I think it could be. Okay. Henry VIII. Henry VIII. Henry VIII is right. Which Roman Catholic priest wrote the tract known as the Invicta Veritas in the 1530s, arguing in favour of the validity of Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon? He was later executed for treason. I, I don't know, I'm afraid. Who was the archbishop? Thomas More? Is that really? Uh, no Thomas More. No, it was Thomas Abel. Oh, fair enough. And finally, in 1533, following the annulment of his first marriage, Henry married Anne Boleyn. 
Which pope declared this marriage invalid, having already threatened Henry with excommunication? All I need is the papal name. I'm no help oh. at all. Pius. Wait in the odds. Yeah, do you have a feeling? Yeah, it might be crazy. Gregory. 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 No, it's Pope Clement the Seventh. Okay. Ten points for this. Meanings of what four-letter word include the layer of a hair, a customary method, a set order of words, an arrangement of a literary or musical composition, and in sport, a condition of health or training? And a Brahit and Armstrong. Form? Form is correct, oh. yes. Right, your bonuses invite you to identify the country of the Six Nations Rugby Tournament that is the closest in area to each of the following countries of West Africa. For example, Sierra Leone would be Scotland. Right. First, for five points, Côte d'Ivoire, also known as the Ivory Coast. Um, OK, so going by the Scotland, Sierra Leone, is Côte d'Ivoire is bigger. Okay. It might be... Um, Italy? I, uh, yeah, why not? Italy? Is that, yeah, not, yeah, is it that I big? Don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know that language. We just try Italy. Yeah. Italy. Italy is correct. Oh, nice. Secondly, the Gambia. Oh, so that's quite small. So it's like it could be really small. Wales? Wales? Yeah. Is, is there any other, others that are that small? I don't think so. The Gambia is teeny tiny. Um, Wales. Wales is right. Finally, Nigeria. That's the biggest France? one. England. Or, or France. Oh, yeah. France. 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 Yeah, that's as much better. Yeah. France. France is right. Well done. Time for another picture round. For your picture starter, you're going to see a painting. Ten points if you can identify the artist. Edinburgh Wang. Kusan. Uh, no anyone like to buzz from Bristol? No? OK, I'll tell you, it's by Goya. So we'll take the picture bonuses in a moment or two and we'll take another starter question in the meantime. Referring to the historic use of a language and officially adopted in June 2016, what name denotes the new region of France that includes the former regions of Languedoc, Roussillon and midi pyrenees Bristol Banks. Occitani. That's correct. <laughs> that Goya that you failed to identify was his strolling players depicting a performance by a troupe of actors of the Commedia dell'arte. Your bonuses are three more paintings of stock characters of the Commedia dell'arte. In each case, I want the name of the artist and the name of the stock character you see. Firstly... But we need both. <laughs> we need both. Yes, yeah, so this, um, Fortunella. Is it Zani? Um, I'm not sure. Fortunella. Oh, is that Fortunella. the Fortunella. And the artist. Mm. All right. Does it look yeah. like? Porcinella and... No, it's the Piero as depicted by Watto. Mm. Secondly, this artist and the Italian name of the character... It's Harlequin. What was it? Harlequino and... And... Dagar? Maybe. Harlequino and Dagar? No, that's Punchinella and Manny. Oh. And finally... Is that Harlequin? Um, okay, it could be Gogan. Harlequin and Gogan? It is the Harlequin, of course. It's by Cezanne, though. Right, ten points for this. With regard to the locations in which they were composed, what links Wittgenstein's Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, Walter Raleigh's History of the World, and Rusticello de Pisa's The Travels of Marco Polo? And Ibrahim and Armstrong. In prison? Correct. Oh. Right, a set of bonuses for you, this time, Edinburgh, on a novel. Who wrote the 2004 work, The Plot Against America? It's an alternative history set mainly in New Jersey during the early 1940s. No idea. No, Stephen King, King, is it? Could be. Yeah. Stephen King. That no, was Philip Roth. In Roth's alternative America, Roosevelt loses the 1940 presidential election to which aviation hero who aligns himself with Nazi Germany and begins to persecute Jews? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Charles Lindbergh. Correct. Whom does Lindbergh appoint as his Secretary of the Interior? In real life, he was a prominent industrialist with outspokenly anti-Semitic views. Um, I'm scared I'm going to defame someone here. Like, who? I don't know. Who are we, who are we talking Ford. about? Ford. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> <though>. <laughs>
Henry Ford. Correct. Well done. Oh, well done. Right, there's about three and a bit minutes to go and ten points for this. What term for a wide river valley is particularly used in place names in Scotland? For example, when prefixing the rivers Urn, Spey and Clyde. Edinburgh Carson Strath. Strath is correct. <laughs> Bonuses this time are on volcanism in the solar system. In 1979, the Voyager mission detected a large eruption plume on the Jovian moon Io, emanating from a volcano given what name after a Hawaiian goddess? Pele. That's a good idea. Uh, Pele. Correct. Well the Saturnian moon Enceladus displays a cryovolcanic plume near its mm. south pole, emanating from fissures given what collective feline nickname? Uh, feline nickname? Um, the cat scratches. Yeah, the scratches. That's, that's scratches. an it, yeah. The cat scratches. No, they're tiger stripes. Oh. Ascreus Mons, Pavonis Mons and Arcea Mons are extinct volcanoes on which planet of the solar system? Well, Mons, I would guess Mars. Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Mars. Mars is right. Ten points for this. Icarus, Ariana, Halo and Dia Bay are all experiments to study what subatomic particle? Bristol has good. Uh, Higgs boson. No one want to bust from Edinburgh? Edinburgh Carson. Neutrino. Correct. Thank you. Right, you get a set of bonuses this time on prominent women. Born in New England in 1947, the author Lydia Davis is noted for translations of Gustave Flaubert and which other major French novelist born in 1871? Um, I, I don't know. Victor Hugo. Maybe. Should we try that? Yeah. Yeah, Victor sure. Hugo. No, it's Proust. Oh, was... oh. Lydia Litviak achieved fame in what role in the Soviet Armed Forces during World War II? She's the subject of White Rose, a 1985 stage work by Peter Arnott. I think she's a pilot? Pilot? pilot, I think. Uh, pilot. Pilot is correct. Mm. Born in Korea in 1997, the New Zealander Lydia Ko is a leading competitor in which sport? It's women's golf. Women's golf. Golf is correct. Yeah. Ten points for this. Which country comes fifth in this clockwise sequence of countries bordering Sudan? Eritrea, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Central African Republic and... Bristol has good. Chad. Chad is correct. Do you get a set of bonuses? On cities in North America mentioned in the Sherlock Holmes stories of Arthur Conan Doyle. In each case, name the city from the description. Firstly, in a study in Scarlet, the place where John Ferrier becomes a prosperous farmer. It's a capital of a landlocked western state. Denver? No, it's Salt Lake City. <laughs> Secondly, a seaport in Georgia. In the five orange pips, it's the destination of the bark Lone Star. <laughs> That was on. Bristol have 60, Edinburgh have 195. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's the end of the road for you, Bristol, but thank you very much for joining us. We've enjoyed having you. And Edinburgh, congratulations. We should look forward to seeing you in the semi finals. Thank, thank you. Thank well you. done. Cheers. I hope you can join us next time for the last quarter final match, but until then, it's goodbye from Bristol University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Edinburgh University. Goodbye. 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 And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>